This is a Singer 401G Slantomatic. The Singer 400 series was made from the mid 1950s to the mid 1960s. There are two types of Singer 401 the 401A and the 401G. The 401A was made in America, while the 401G was made in Germany. Essentially, they're the same machine, though there are a few differences. The style of the American 401 is much simpler and featured a flip up bobbin winder, while the style of the German 401 was sleeker and had the bobbin winder at the top. The German machine also had slots in the base, so it could be converted to treadle power, but you would need to change the hand wheel to one that would take a belt. It also features a second take up lever, similar to that found on the Singer 500 the Rocketeer. I guess the reason for the cosmetic differences is that the Rocketeer, a futuristic looking atomic styled machine, was not available in Europe. The American 401 and 500 were mechanically very similar, but styled very differently. The German 401 falls somewhere in between the two style wise. The 401 was also a slantomatic machine. The first slant shanked machine was the Singer 301, a straight stitch only machine from the early 1950s, which was also not available in Europe. The reason Singer created the slant needle bar was to bring the needle towards the front of the machine, making it easier to see the stitch point and meaning less bending down to peer for the operator. The needle bar is angled at approximately 9 degrees. Angled any further and the needle would be prone to deflecting off the fabric, creating poor stitches and an increased chance of needle breakage. The machine is cast aluminium with a built in direct drive motor and is completely gear driven with a full rotary hook mechanism, just like the 201. It does use special slant shanked feet and attachments, meaning you can't use attachments you may have for other non slant machines. The feed dogs do not drop, instead a lever on the bed raises the feed dog plate up, so the feed dogs don't come into contact with the fabric. The face plate is hinged for easy access to oil in, and houses a handy threading guide, so you don't have to search through the manual. The needle clamp is capable of taking two standard needles side by side and there's two sets of tension discs, along with two spool pins, to make twin needle sewing simple. As well as the lockable stitch length lever, there is a red lever on the front to set the needle position or the zigzag width. Above the built-in light is a large stitch selector knob, or rather two. Push in the outer knob and turn to select settings from A to J and pull out the inner knob while turning to select settings K to S. Combinations of these settings along with the stitch length and needle position levers accesses the built-in pattern cams. The flap at the top of the machine has a handy guide for setting some of these stitches, with even more in the instruction manual. There appears to be an almost infinite combination of settings available to experiment with. The flap also gives access to where the additional top hat styled pattern cams can be fitted. Five cams come with the machine and are stored along with the other accessories in these handy drawers that fit under the extension bed. Setting the selector to A and K and the stitch width to 3 gives a straight stitch. B, L and 5 gives a wide zigzag. It's easy to see why, at the time, Singer considered this to be the best machine they'd ever made.
to wind a bobbin, loosen the stop motion screw. Pass the thread around the front plastic wind intention disc, then thread through the hole in a class 66 bobbin from inside to out, and mount on the bobbin winder. Make sure that the thread goes around the front of this post and pull out the bobbin winder engaging slide. While holding the tail, start to operate the machine. When full, the bobbin will stop automatically. Push in the slide and tighten the stop motion screw. Open the slide plate and drop the bobbin in with the thread coming off in an anti-clockwise direction. Draw the thread through the spring slot and through the notch. Close the slide plate, making sure the thread sits in the notch. To thread the machine, raise the take-up lever to the highest point and lift the presser foot. Place the thread on the spool pin and draw it into the first thread guide. Down through the secondary thread control take-up lever, from the left and over to the right, and then down through one of the sets of tension discs. Pull up so the thread catches on the notch on the tension assembly. Up through the thread guide, and through the main take-up lever from right to left. Back down through the front thread guide attached to the tension mechanism, and then through the lower thread guide. And two further thread guides on the needle bar itself. Then thread the needle from front to back. The needle fits in with the long groove to the front and the flat part to the back. Turn the hand wheel towards you to draw up the bottom thread. Place both threads under the presser foot and to the rear of the machine. Let's try out some of the stitches. I hope you've enjoyed this video, if you have please give it a like, and if you haven't already please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon so you won't miss any of my future uploads. Thanks for watching.